Hello, and welcome to this week's RSNA Case of the Week. My name is Anke Mola, and I'm a third-year radiology resident at Cooper University Hospital in Camden, New Jersey. Today, we'll be discussing a case of Lemire's Syndrome. Our case is of a 20-year-old male who initially presented with a two-week history of sore throat, which progressed to painful neck swelling, a fever, productive cough, and pleuritic chest pain. An initial chest radiograph was obtained, which demonstrated multiple bilateral cavitating and non-cavitating pulmonary nodules, as denoted by the white arrows, as well as bilateral loculated complex pleural effusions, as denoted by the blue arrows. Here we see axial and coronal contrast enhanced CT images of the neck. These images demonstrate filling defects of the left internal jugular and left external jugular veins with associated vessel wall enhancement, as demonstrated by the white and blue arrows, respectively. Axial and coronal contrast enhanced CT images of the neck at a different level now demonstrate a rim enhancing fluid collection, as denoted by the white and yellow arrows, adjacent to the left submandibular gland and sternocleidomastoid muscle. Axial contrast enhanced CT images of the chest, with lung window on the left and soft tissue window on the right, now demonstrate multiple bilateral cavitating pulmonary nodules, as denoted by the black arrows, and complex bilateral pleural effusions with enhancement of the adjacent pleural surfaces as denoted by the blue arrows. Given these findings, the final diagnosis of Lemire syndrome was made. Lemire syndrome represents a clinical entity of a head and neck infection with associated septic thrombophobitis. This typically starts as an infection in the neck, including pharyngitis, tonsillitis, periodontal disease, or peripheral abscess, and spreads through the soft tissues to result in septic thrombophobitis, typically of either the internal or external jugular veins. From there, the infection may spread as septic emboli throughout the body. The differential for Lemire syndrome largely depends on the site of involvement and the time of patient presentation. In our case, metastatic disease may be considered given the multiple bilateral pulmonary nodules identified. However, this case is of a young male presenting with a peripheral abscess with signs and symptoms of an infection and fever, making metastatic disease less likely. Similarly, a septic thrombosis may be considered given the intraluminal filling defect and thrombosis of the internal and external jugular veins. However, our patient presented with signs and symptoms of an infection with adjacent fat straining of these vessels, making septic thrombophobitis much more likely. Lemire syndrome typically affects young males, with 70% of cases affecting 16 to 25 year olds with a slight male predominance. Patients may present with symptoms of an oropharyngeal infection, sore throat, and neck swelling. Additional symptoms may be encountered depending on the site of infection, including joint pain with septic arthritis or changes in mentation and headache with meningitis. In the majority of cases, the classic causative agent is Fusobacterium necrophorum. The CT findings of Lemire syndrome within the neck typically demonstrates internal jugular vein thrombophobitis, which manifests as an intravascular filling defect with intraluminal hypotenuation, vessel wall enhancement, and adjacent soft tissue swelling and fat stranding. Similarly, ultrasound evaluation of the neck may identify an intraluminal filling defect with a hyperchoic thrombus and the absence of flow on colored Doppler imaging. Once the infection spreads, the most common site of involvement is within the lungs. Pulmonary involvement, as demonstrated in our case, may manifest with septic emboli and empyemas. Additional lung involvement can include pneumothoraces and necrotizing mediastinitis. While the lungs are the most commonly infected organ, additional sites of involvement are certainly possible. Joint involvement and osteomyelitis are not uncommon complications. The liver can also be a site of distant spread leading to intrahepatic abscess formation. CNS spread is also possible and can vary depending on the site of emboli and include intracranial abscesses, meningitis, and ischemia. The prognosis for Lemire syndrome has improved greatly with increased awareness and early antibiotic therapy. Treatment involves a long course of antibiotic treatment with definitive therapy based on culture sensitivities. Surgical intervention is often necessary for drainage of neck abscesses, complicated empyemas, or the removal of extensive septic pulmonary emboli unamendable to medical therapy. Additional interventions and surgical deprivement may be necessary based on organ involvement, including septic arthritis or intracranial abscess formation. I hope you enjoy this case, and thank you for listening.